the pandemic and uh, mental health taught me one thing that I need to be part of a solution. If I can help one person, like affect them so they can lead a happier, healthier life, then it's all been worth it. Welcome everybody to Jukebox Jack's podcast. It's uh, it's been a while. Uh, we've been busy behind scenes. Um, but this episode specifically, um, I get to pull in one of my. In these situations, people would say one of like close friend, but it's not the the friend circle that we have. We are literally more like family. Um, I couldn't have thought of a more perfect person to have this episode with. I'm still slightly envious that he got to actually attend this festival, and I didn't, <laughs> or mortified. Um, but yeah, this is a um, it's a continuation of his normal premise on the podcast. Um, it's available on Spotify as audio and video on our YouTube channel, and you'll see it on Instagram, and there'll be adverts and socials going up throughout the episode. Um, but this is a special one. Um, we're going to try where possible for Gian's recollection of uh, reviewing the download pilot that he attended. Um, I'm right in thinking it was your first major thing coming out of. Yeah, so yeah. Um, went to see a show, but you were allowed to sit down and you weren't allowed to clap or cheer. And it was really weird. Um when RuPaul's drag show, I won't lie. But uh, <laughs> it was just so bizarre, but you could sit in with everybody. So I didn't understand how that actually worked because the whole thing about COVID was well, you've got to stand at least two metres apart, but everyone could sit on these little benches cuddled up together, but you were allowed to clap because apparently if you clapped or shouted, then the, the, the COVIDity came in. COVIDity, I love it. <laughs> That's on it. It was really bizarre, but yeah, so... This was the first thing I've been to, and it was my first ever download, but it wasn't the full experience, but it was still really good. Fantastic. Yeah, really good. Yeah, because it, it obviously the, the pilot section of obviously the download name, um, I'm right in thinking it was obviously the government pilot that they were doing. So I, were it across the board that it, everything that were getting done at that time, it were like 10,000 people, or were it just however yeah, many that- thousand no, well, limited to 10,000, but it was, the pilot was done as a test. So that it was, the, they said it was a test. So they were, you had to do certain things in order to gain access to it. And if you, you know, dropped at the last third or we'll say, you would have uh, got your money back. So it wasn't like, a, it, look, you won't, you won't be able to go, which is really rubbish. But if you can't go, you'd just get a refund. So that was a test. If you, if you basically didn't have COVID and you passed, a lateral test, a PCR test, you could go. It was just kind of everyone had to stay indoors for like a week or two before. Right? Yeah, because there's a lot of that with just everyday things. Um, like there's a lot of people that are, that know they've booked in to do certain things, festivals, gigs and stuff coming up. Mm-hmm. And if they're, especially like work related, if they're working in places where there's certain outbreaks happening and stuff, they're kind of distancing themselves yeah. away because yeah. they don't want it to spoil because it's it's not our place it's not anybody's place to be kind of like you know the, the government dictating this that and other end of the day these are the little measures that we have to do in able to go back to a gig with his friends and stuff do mm-hmm. it you know what i mean so yeah it's um so i'm right in thinking then when even though you, you've been double jabbed already aren't you yeah 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 because obviously ongoing health um condition and stuff but you then still had to submit a negative test so yeah, you because, weren't carrying it yeah because when this was a test they've changed it all since so as you see now if you're going to go to certain clubs you've got to produce a lateral test you've got to show that you've been double jabbed and i believe the other one's a pcr test in the last so many days i'm not sure about the last one but um now i can just show my covid passport or whatever it's called and it just shows that i've been jabbed twice so i don't have to do the tests but with this one, we had to do the PCR test, I want to say five days before, then the day before do a lateral test, providing both of them were negative, you were just fine to go. And all you had to do is show your results on your phone or email when you actually got to the 
um, entrance, uh, not like the entrance to actually walk in. So obviously you could be in car park, but yeah. So I mean, I'm obviously picturing it like when we went to Temple News and for Slam Dunk. Um, yeah, before. So, so I'm trying yeah. to think of how when we first went in. Obviously, we we had a ticket. They gave us a wristband. Did you have well, the same sort of check-in thing there? But you had to show them. Um... This were all before that. So, like you say, we won, didn't we? Because we went, we got, did we get, we got dropped off a bit away, didn't we? So we walked to Temple News and for that one. Yeah. Uh, but if we'd have gone in car, obviously there's a there's a car park in place, and we'd we'd have gone in there, then you'd have, as slam dunk went, you'd have gone and got a ticket, you know, exchange your ticket for a wristband. Before that, there were like a first booth where you had to show your tests and everything. Then once you got through that, then there were like your exchange your ticket for your wristband, uh, and then it kind of went from there as most festivals do. But because it were a pilot, like the camping space. Well, a lot smaller because it shows you a map and like say downloads yeah huge it was like a, a corner of it so lost so much space but it's funny because we're ten thousand. yeah because normally i mean i've i've not i've not been to the download i was planning on going to the one obviously before covid yeah. happened um but yeah, there's for those people that's never been to a download festival, there's there's multiple camping sites. Originally they used to be obviously just the, the main camping site, but now you've got different versions. You've got glamping, you've got ones that where after a certain amount of time, the people within the tent areas are bed and stuff like your early nighters and stuff like that. So they've categorized loads of different things. And I think they've got one specifically for like motorhomes, vehicles and stuff as well. So yeah, but like- for the proper ones they have, yeah, this wasn't really like that. Yeah, so like you said, the pilot, obviously, with it being reduced, you, you weren't going to have all that. So that in itself would have been a, a big thing because it's it's the same thing that we've all seen of it, like media shots of it, years of download, just to, as far as your eye can see, tents and, and everything else, you know, people cooking fry-ups on the morning and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we, we got in, we obviously got all the tickets and one of the lasses, uh, um, a ticket wouldn't work so she had to go like fill out you know when you used to go to like pubs and things that, that I don't have COVID form yeah yeah fill that out and she took ages and I was like everyone's walking by us and it's raining <laughs> um, yeah okay we're all went through and she finally got there and then we ended up walking from like Castleford to Spain <laughs> to get it. and but we camped literally outside the arena we walked from my house to your house away for that bless really yeah it were amazing so even if we were sat you could just turn and watch there were only two stages and they're both kind of you know it's Lambda, you've got like i think it's jägermeister and monster i, I might have gotten wrong but yeah, the, yeah. The two ones it was basically could you see them too so even if you weren't bothered about going and seeing them you could just sit just sit drink. sit drink yeah. watch you know what i mean that, yeah that's it and that was the beauty of this and there was so much that this did that other ones didn't. It was a lot more relaxed because there weren't many people and there were a lot of, and I say idiots, you know what I mean? There were a lot yeah. of people called chaos and stuff and it were more chilled and relaxed, especially in the pandemic. Yeah, but, uh, because everybody were eager to get to that festival for the first time that everybody had missed out. and Absolutely. I suppose you think back to like 60s, 70s, you know, peace and love and stuff like that. that that's the perfect yeah, scenario well, for festival, you know, that pilot that they it, had. Yeah, absolutely, stuff like that. But yeah, when you first got in, there were like a rule they had and you could only take either a, a crate of beer, which had, I think it was, tw- tw- I want to say 24 cans. <laughs> or, or you could take three litres of wine, which is quite a lot. <laughs> yeah. Or a 35 cent litre bottle of spirits. You could, oh no, no, it was 70, but you could mix and match. So you could take like less cans and less spirits, less wine. You know what I mean? You want a mixture of them ones. But I don't know how we did it, but we we absolutely bossed it and got so much stuff in so one of the lads had this like trolley from Costco which obviously I end stuff <laughs> and uh, we basically put all the beers on there thinking if they asked we could just say oh that one's mine that one's his you know like that and he walked in he went is that your beer mate he went yeah he went right well, you can't have you can't come back out because you've got your beer and we were all like there's so much more beer in um car. <laughs> we can all come back out now this is amazing so li- literally we walked in, I got a blue band, a lot of the other people did, and just him who didn't. So we got there and just dumped all stuff and we're like, we'll go back later because it's wet through. 
it's absolutely you know it, it's not warm but it's it's just peeing it down we're all in like um that the sort of material that makes you sweat more you know pointless for rain because you can be wet inside more than you are outside and uh <laughs> they all sit in the tent so and mine's one of those pop-up ones so I'm like i've got this lads no i'm in me but when i looked at their tents next to mine mine looked like a dog kennel <laughs> Theirs are like proper tents, and I was like, I've got this wrong. I, I'm, I'm, what am I doing? <laughs> and it turns out that mine weren't waterproof. No. So I looked in it, and I was like, it's not even day one, and I can't. So we all chipped in for a gazebo as well, and I'm going to sleep under the gazebo. <laughs> but then <laughs> one of the lads were like, no, mate, I've, uh, I've got like a six man. I jump in with me, and I'm like, I felt you know, really grateful. But like we just left my tent there for the time being and just looked at it sometimes and took a picture of it and just done it so it was just it was so small <laughs> but I, put, I brought it back up I'm like leaving that hey that's took- that, that, that is proper funny because it's anybody that knows you knows if that were going to happen to anyone it's going to yeah. happen to you yeah yeah so like we um it took us it took four of us to put it away it's a pop-up tent Absolutely unreal, <laughs> unreal man. Because that's that's one of the things I've always looked forward to—the camping side of things, yeah. Um, and go in and stuff. And obviously, next year onwards and stuff like you know, it'll, it'll be open up bigger and things like that. Yeah. So, I'm definitely aiming to be there for next year. But um, we'll see kiss. Yes, as amongst so many others, um, as we know, lineups all continually change along the way. Yeah, man. Yeah, but yeah. So, um, so yeah. Obviously, you got um, you got yourselves checked in. Um, you got your tent set up. Um, what uh, what time did first band start from? So the weird one. So because we got there on a Friday, the the band started on Friday from I think I want to say five or six. Uh, but then Saturday, Sunday, or twelve. I think it's just because. It were a pilot and that's what it was. The limited bands they had, they couldn't do a full day Friday because they didn't want everyone coming in while bands were playing because no one would get to see them. It was a bit pointless. Because <coughs> I'm sure usually you, you set up on Thursday, don't you? And then Friday's your first day. Yeah. When the carnage starts on Thursday, don't it? When there's an acoustic night and because people just go sit and watch and get absolutely obliterated. <laughs> so you were... Were you there for the whole weekend then? Yeah, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Come back Monday. A broken man. Who were? (laughs) Yeah, everything that you're saying so far ties into the fact that why you ended up drinking so much. (laughs) Because literally when you sent that message to us, um, obviously saying um, how you felt and stuff after the weekend and how much you drank and we were like, whoa, that's a crazy amount. Even, Even for us that go a bit silly when we're all together and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> got no excuse. I've already enjoyed myself for my first days of freedom. That's it, and everybody were having that well-deserved blowout. You know, it's it's been tough on everyone's mental health. The whole the lockdowns, the pandemic. You know, family members that they might have lost a long way and stuff. So everybody needed that sense of normality to, even if it's just a you know a reduced amount of ten thousand and stuff like that. It's it's still worth it. The memories that you've got from that day. Absolutely. And Jay, you're one of them bonus people in that sense now. So, you know, however many downloads we now attend after this, you can be one of them people that say, well, I actually, well, we're at the pilot one. But they respond. <laughs> anybody, that, anybody that knows us personally knows how deeply connected we get to our wristbands at us festivals. And They're all the, in a little box, man. Yep. Yeah, the day that it, literally frays or snaps on its own accord is it's literally like a funeral like it's yeah, it's we're very we're sad times we all, we all carry it down vicar street <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's so true um <laughs> friday night do you remember who who were playing headliner while frank carter and the rattlesnakes and you've seen them before um, i've Ish, but it was more when Franco and Gallows, right? Uh, and to say I'm not, not that I'm not a fan of them, 
but they were one of the best bands I saw there. They were so good. And like, you know, everyone just, it was just, it was the fact that it was the first time you could look around on a night and see everybody just stood together having fun because you haven't been able to do that for like 18 months. Yeah. Like, what's that? We want 10,000 people also dead, don't get me wrong, but a good chunk of people just stood watching a band. No nonsense, everyone singing along, being happy. They were just, they were ace. And, they were, and yeah, it, it was just everyone's having a really good time. You know, people are jumping about dancing, but if they're not, you were an accident. But what do you expect? <laughs> yeah, because I mean, this this is where it's. I'm not saying normally acts, bands, musicians don't enjoy the camaraderie with you know the people that's actually going to watch them. But I think they would have equally enjoyed the performances and and the day yeah, yeah. sets and stuff. And I think you'd have, you'd have been able to because I mean. People like Gian, I mean, Gian's he's got his own Instagram account where he there's like you need to check him out on it. It's uh, the the graphics will be coming up uh, for our episode anyway, but it's uh, Gian underscore spins underscore two. Oh, on the Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Gian's he's always had an obsession, we can quite proudly say, um, on <laughs> vinyls and music and stuff. So if you think the bigger picture thing during the time where the bands weren't able, even local bands and, and such weren't able to perform, weren't able to gig the revenue from merchandise sales, t-shirts, you know, whatever else, vinyls, CDs without people like Gian in that sense, a lot of, a lot of bands, a lot of people, you know, on their own solo projects could have folded a long way. So even though it's, it's more the, I'm probably, yeah, I'd probably say it's, I'm right in thinking it's more the reason you started that social media was well, the sheer volume of different designs, the colours, the multiple yeah. artworks. Yeah, for me, it's like, you know, black vinyl, black vinyl, and I get that people love that, but for me, it's all about different variants and colours. I mean, I've got the same album, right? Um, the, the new Creeper one. I bought two different ones to do two different pictures. Exactly the same album, <laughs> but they're both amazing, so, you know. What's it to quid when you can't go in there? <laughs> you can only say that so many times, though, trust me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, you so save, when, you, when you're saving up for your house as well, Jim. <laughs> only so many times because it's 50 quid and then you end up with about 19 different t shirts. This is very, see, actually, it's quite funny because I, before we, we came on air and stuff like that, I, um, I messaged Jim <laughs> about some, uh, some housework renovating that I'm going to be doing um, to like do a walk-in wardrobe and stuff. And instantly, as soon as I sent him that message, I was thinking, I can see roles being reversed when Gene gets his place. He's going to have a walk-in wardrobe, but for his vinyls. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. There's like, going to be a room for vinyls, room for my long sleeves. And I'll just have a bed somewhere in shed. Tent. Just up tent. <laughs> Hopefully not the one I took the down one. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> but yeah, the uh, yeah, your, your your Instagram channel, man. There's there's so many like I, I, we we've got a large friend circle, but there's, there's so many different artwork that pops up, and it even ties in a lot with um, with me and Chris. Obviously, those people know him. Smeg is a yeah. obviously he's a graphic designer, um, and it helps with his because he's very similar with you with vinyls. He collects them for that exact same reason he likes the different styles and the different artwork in sleeves I have, I have a little competition it's getting a little bit heated, <laughs> you know? so, like there were one I after and he got it and I was ain't mad I didn't show it I, I sent him a private message and I called a lot of names but then I guys and then I think I got something it's like oh where'd you get that from or like <laughs> <not telling you. laughs> or like oh. yeah kind of jib in it like my like you know my my better than yours and all that, but no, it, it it's nice that you can kind of share where you got them because who was collecting them? You won't want, you won't want them to miss out on something. Yeah, that's it because it's you know what I mean that there's you know certain ones there's limited numbers made and stuff like that, but it, it's still yeah we've always been them sort of people. It's like oh if if you actually want one, I'll I'll let you know where you can get them and stuff. Not a case of oh <laughs> there's only four hundred made, so I'm not telling anybody where to get them because I want a copy and no that's one else. It. If you, but then you get your record star days where I'm queuing up from five o'clock at Wawa in Wakey and I'm like, I need this one. And you're counting how many people's in front of you because I tell you how many they're getting. And yeah. there were 
the, the, tri the, the trio from here to infirmary one, there were only five or six or seven people in front of me. I was like, this could be the, this, this could be the end. <laughs> but but it, it was that one, how well after. <laughs> um, that's what I was going to ask, yeah, leading, uh, leading on from obviously your social channel. Um, how were the merchandise stalls at Pilot? Were well, the... you know, well, there were quite a few, and you know, there were the main one opposite the stage. There were two or three actually. They all worked well, and a lot of stuff had sold out because people were happy to be paying merch and sorry, paying for merch. But all the ones you wanted just went so quick. So I don't know if there were limited stock because they didn't know how they were going to work. But um, the one I wanted, and I, can't even, <laughs> I wanted it that much, I can't remember what band it was. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up buying the download one, you know, because I went and yep, yep. it's got the dog, but I'm sure he's got like a thermometer in his mouth or something. He's got something to do with like, <laughs> and I thought that's pretty sweet. But yeah, um, it was just the same queuing system from all, but um, they were always busy. Because if you think when you go to a normal one, you've got like what, eight, ten different ones. And this one had two or three. Yeah, and even though you've got a condensed number of 10,000 people, it's still, you've only got like, well, two sources of places to go to get stuff. Yeah. See, you, yeah. you've you always, even though it's a bad representation because of the tent incident that you've described, but you always go prepared to festivals. You usually have like a drawstring bag with you or something like that. So you can always oh, I... buy the merch and just stick it in your bag and stuff like that. But yeah. I've... I've always struggled. Like, there's so many things when I'm there. Like, I think I said to you when we were at Slam Dunk, like, I saw about six different things. I was like, oh, I really want to get that. I really want... But it was just, I didn't want to be carrying it with me. Need a bum bag, mate. Yeah. Well, I had that, but that, that, were, that were literally full of me, um, me power banks <laughs> oh, <laughs> to keep yeah. phones charged up. <laughs> I forgot that. Yeah, you turned up as Mr. Miss Power Bunny, didn't you? Yeah, well, that's, it's a it's standard that, though, that. that. You were a godsend, I won't lie, mate. We were all like, you were like, it's wires coming out here. Yeah, it's like, yeah, here you go. I felt like um, data off of Goonies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's like, but that's 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 literally it. We're like, we're all there. Like, we've got no signal anyway, but wow, we're running out of charge. But yeah, but to be honest, with this download, I went, I, I wasn't prepared at all. A, my tent. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone took an airbed and I took like this yoga 5am mat and it was just like, it was, it was, it was like a Rivita to lay on. <laughs> and I thought, like, oh, there's nothing to be comfy. They're like, yeah, Jim, if you put it under an airbed, I was like, all right. So I'm, the only thing I did take was a pillar and a sleeping bag and the sleeping bag were like a proper, like durable one. And everyone would call it night and I was like, yeah, I'm great. Thanks for letting me stay in your tent. Yeah, but I mean, to be honest as well, like you, you were download virgin coming into this. So you, you, you only know from talking to friends and stuff, where, but no one really after a festival comes back, especially download and say, says, this is the camping setup you need to do. Everybody just wants to talk about the bands. They want to talk about what the drunk while they were there and stuff. And how yeah. no one, no one gives you a positive review of, right. If you are seriously going to download, you need this, this, this. So I've got no, like no qualms that, I would be in the same boat as you. I'd the Leeds, living out of a bag. It's the same as Leeds Fest, but because I've got older, I've not been and like stayed for a weekend no more just because I can't hack it. You know, I'm, I'm getting older. I, I want a bed. <laughs> 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 like, you know, when, when it was like 2007 and eight, you just slept wherever you fell, really, in the tent. Yeah. But now it's like, right, zip me up. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, you get in, you're right. Like, up to be like night everybody it's like waltons everyone saying good night John. <laughs> like that. that's just you answering yourself each time as well to be fair yeah, know yeah. that from experience but that's this like i've got my vinyl page on there as well and then my other page where i just try and wear cool clothes and fail <laughs> no you don't fail mate your your page <laughs> your personal page even well i say personal page but it's it's set as public yeah, yeah. um it's but that, things like that make sense as anybody who's got social medias and, and stuff like that, if they want to be hashtagging anything, there's no point in hashtagging something if it's not set as public because it doesn't trend, do it. yeah, it doesn't come up as searches. But, yeah, mate, your, your clothing collection has always, well, we've got an inkling of just of some jackets that's on the back of the bedroom door there and stuff. There's, 
so so many and they're always focal points but that's that's the one thing about anybody who knows you personally you and it's not you don't do it to to cause a reaction it's just you it's the genuineness to you you like what you like and if nobody else doesn't well you know you won't hold grudges of them but you find at times that you're getting a lot of criticism you're getting comments made towards you through opinionated people about you know what you're wearing and stuff but yeah. anywhere absolutely anywhere we've been with you like slam dunk for instance you want yeah. to tell people what you <laughs> what you're wearing at slam dunk i, wore, uh, I don't know what you're talking about i wore uh i wore some night blazers that were a nice um like grassy green color aren't they like astro yep. turfine i had some nice blue hue shorts on um i had a new flan glory t-shirt a rasta colored bum bag <laughs> I had my sunglasses and a headband. I think that was it, wasn't it? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I wore a sparkly kimono. Uh, <laughs> but literally, I was shedding shedding little shards of it all the way through down uh, through Slamdunk. So if you lost me, I had a trail. It was literally, <laughs> if you imagine the beginning scene to the Moonwalker film with Michael Jackson, it shows you. <laughs> His socks, his glitter socks going past. Well, that was Gian just walking everywhere, the trail and glitter and gleam behind him. But the reactions were just priceless because not one negative comment. Everybody were like, holy fuck, who is this guy? Not only, <laughs> not only is he rocking the most glittery, shiny kimono ever, look at his tash. Because at yeah, that point, have- you didn't have your mullet at that point. No. Yeah, it's coming to this one, along with the jacket. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I mean, this is this is our friend circle that we're talking about. That we've always been respectful of each other's opinions on things, but there's always one common thing that we're all associated in as person, personalities is just be yourself and be comfortable in your own skin. Absolutely. I mean, you know full well with me. If I'm out and I'm wearing something a bit that's not black, for example, I know that's a bit stronger. <laughs> You get a lot of people like that that are quite mean and question your sexuality and things like that, which again it don't bother me at all. I'm a straight man, I like women, uh, but when you start getting it all and all, people start thinking, and it's not a nice trait for them to do to you because they don't know you at all. Yeah. But then if someone like from, I'm not picking on lads as such because I can't pick anyone, but if they were to tell everyone, tell everyone, no one's going to come talk to you, but especially in that kind of way because yeah. they think. Instead of them coming over and just talking to you as they would, they think, oh, sound completely different. You know, you, were, you say it to me all the time when we're having conversations of the, like, about these topics and stuff that you, you always say it to me that it, it says more about them than it does about, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. about me as a person. The fact that they feel that insecure about what I'm wearing, it's not even like I'm forcing them to wear it. This is what I'm wearing. No. They're so insecure yeah. about it that then they decide to turn aggressive or just nasty about like, it it's like that says more a joke, a bit of a joke about it to benefit themselves because then because clearly it sounds off it's not that the limelight's on me but they're being just cast outside because they're like oh, that's nice top that guy's got on or look at his tash or you know it's always like but it's not always me they can say about other people and say what happened to them yes most definitely you know? and there this is what a lot of people when I think it, especially when you specifically talk about download for festivals mm-hmm. where you've got a certain certain collective group of people that are going to these heavier yeah. festivals. People have got this assumption, and I think it was me and Felix were talking about it on that episode that we did. Because of that certain sort of music, people with skinheads, people with tattoos all over the face, big beards, chains dangling mm-hmm. off the face and the clothing that yeah. nobody you know everybody will be fighting there's nothing but aggressive there them sort of festivals are the most loving and peaceful yeah. festivals that you're at this one i went to literally well i, I took my jacket <laughs> <laughs> like every single first one the best time i didn't see one person argue you just don't see any like negativity or anything it's all everyone's going to have fun and that's what everyone did like if people you didn't know People are having a laugh with you, like shaking your hand or dancing with you and stuff, you know. But at night, people, the, the drink got the better of people, but they didn't do anything wrong. 
but you just look around and thought everyone's enjoying themselves. This is what it all should be like in life, but it doesn't work like that, does it? No, and I think again, it, it ties in with our personalities, all all that, and our friend circle. The, the fact that we all have collectively have the same musical interests and inclinations in that sense, because it all comes down to the same point that the I've always said it that the rock industry, the music industry, everything that surrounds it, it's nothing but a family, and it's always a welcoming family atmosphere in that yeah, sense but- where everybody's friendly with each other everybody's coming together just sheerly for the love of the music and everything that's attached to that whether it's you know so, vinyls, like you said clothing tattoo collections yeah. everything that goes with it but it's i don't i just don't think you get that with certain other music no, genres. Like, nowadays everyone's got so this is how it works and it sounds daft but you understand where i'm from wherever you are going there's like a you've got to have a look for that thing yeah so so you go to download, you know, most people who go to download dress like you've just said, but then you go to Leeds Fest, it's a different sense. I mean, you can still like the same music and stuff, but it's just how people choose to dress and live. That's their lifestyle and everyone should just enjoy it. Like, you know, I could go out with someone who's like really into techno and our or dresses in like, you know, full Adidas get up. There's nothing wrong with that because it's not, that doesn't say anything about them. When you start talking to them, you realise who they are. I mean, this time and time again you go out and you just think I stay away from that crowd because they look bad but that's me judging them and then when they come have a conversation you're like well I was wrong yeah sorry you well, apologize to you. yeah there's just not enough there's not enough people that's kind of like that in that sense where they're, okay. they're open to the fact that they may be wrong and that person might actually end up being one of the closest friends they'll ever have in their life Absolutely. and they're kind of missing out on it um but what- one of my friends, I've known him for years now. I had spoken to him for a good few years, bless him. Um, I think I've calmly settled down and stuff. But when we used to go out back in the day, like 15 years ago, he always used to wear like trackies and Bradford Ball, Bradford Bulls top. And <laughs> but his favourite band, my blood <laughs> you, know, you, you knew full well that how he was back in the day, you'd say, Well, that person's a chav because that's how it was back then. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're either a chav or a mosher. <laughs> back in school but <laughs> even though we dressed like that he was just like one of the nicest people ever but that's again you, you'd look at people and people judge them for how well they dress and it's not to do with that and it's a collective thing across society and it yeah we are talking about like rock music and things like that but just in general if people people put on weight people lose weight you know people <laughs> go through alcohol substance abuse things like that yeah. If the physical appearance changes, it doesn't change who they are as a person. They're still the same person on inside. And I think that's lost along the way. Probably, I'd probably say over the last 10 years, more than anything, just with societies yeah. in general around the world, that things, if they don't, don't look eye-catching in that sense, whether it's physical attractions and things like that, then straight away, people are discarded as the, you know what I mean? Or they look a certain way, so no, or whatever. And it's like, that because I personally, and I'm not one of them people to kind of talk about it that often, but I know so, so, so many really stunningly attractive women, models oh. and things like that. But yeah, sadly, so- sadly, the dot have a beautiful personality to go with it. And that's what I'm talking about in that sense. You could look as, as you know, whatever you want to do, surgery, you know, lip fillers and everything else like that. But if, you, if you're not a nice person on inside, that means nothing. Whereas you have yeah. quite a lot of people that have that about them, but people would sort of say, "Oh, but you know, the overweight or whatever," and it's like it don't matter, yeah. it don't matter. Look at me, I'm absolutely flawless, and I've got the best personality ever. So <laughs> I'm just, just kidding. I'm just really good looking. <laughs> oh. Oh. I put a joke in somewhere. Like this, one bit. this is see what people understand is this right now. The conversation is just literally the conversations that flow with me and G and from best of times, like on a daily basis. These are the conversations. If anybody actually looked, maybe no, I'm gonna say if people looked at us WhatsApps, maybe they shouldn't actually because no, all all WhatsApp is is you telling what happens on Love Island all the time, which is true, guys. I'm letting for you. <laughs> <laughs> Although it was quite funny, I was were, I were working last night and I, uh, we, we've always, it, like, 
in our friend circle, there's no alpha male. There's, none of that exists. None of us believe in it. So every day, someone else is getting abused and everybody just takes it for what it's worth. I'm sat there innocently, actually, for once doing my work. Oh, it's and a blister. I, and it was, yeah, Alexa Bliss. And it's, yeah, it's usually two shots that are, well, three, actually. It'll be Alexa Bliss, someone will take a swipe at me, Avril Lavigne or Hayley Williams. And <laughs> do, they never come every day, do they, just like the abuse, the different <laughs> gifts, the memes, the pictures, whatever. It'll it just be sporadic. And then it'll just, there'll be a few days where it just dies off. And then for whatever Ooh. reason, everybody collectively has decided, oh, Gian's getting it today for whatever reason. And it just keeps going back full circle. But those things, I don't know, those things really kind of like, especially during lockdowns and stuff, they, they got me through. Yeah, it was fun, wasn't it? Because it was banter. Because we, we, there were never no like maliciousness in it or anything. We're just doing it to kind of keep spirits high and have a laugh. Because if you just let out today, good, nice one. It's going to be like that all the time, and it can just go down. So it's like let's just rip someone a little bit. <laughs> like, like you are saved in my phone as Jack, and then I rip Heart and Island. So you are. Just- <laughs> <laughs> well, that's probably quite like added on the facts that G and personally i think he must know the most jacks ever like i, I don't even know a quarter of jacks that you know yeah, we all hung out together as well like <laughs> that we, night we went we, out yeah <laughs> for three of us me jack jack and callum they were like oh, where's jack Is yeah there? no not yeah because they were literally there were obviously they were carthorn they were turpin they were me and then like yeah. i said there were you and callum oh. So it would just sort of like, but yeah, I, I I don't know if it's because I've worked in like security industries as long as I have. Nine times out of ten, I call someone by the surname anyway. So them instances. That's... So we did that night, Turpin Coffin. On. <laughs> and for some reason, mine just stuck. Mine just looked like Jack. <laughs> yeah, because I don't know. For some reason, it's like when you say someone's when you say surname, do you know what I mean? It's like it's true. It's just I I don't, I don't particularly like the surname to be fair, but I it's. Know. We're going to start calling you Fire Pit, but I don't want to like. <laughs> well, you've called me many things before Levine, Bliss, Love Island. I haven't called you everything too because you didn't even like them, do you? <laughs> oh, right. Let's, right. Um, to the best of your knowledge, we're going to see if we can run through who you went to see. Again, this is all base it on the fact of his recollection because he was slightly intoxicated for that weekend. The first thing, but it's just really bad because it all kind of merges together mm. to ban the CD because you could see a lot of them, like I say, from where we were sat. So when we got to where we were, it was like the, the most beautiful thing ever because we were sat in a gazebo and you could just see to the end of the hill, which was a stone throw away. Uh, second stage were there, main stage were just at left. So you could see the screens of the main stage but all of the other stage, which were brilliant. But I always remember, because when we got there, we had to do two, two trips to the car. So the second trip, we came back, and I went to see the first band, which was on, which were Malevolence. Um, I only caught the back end of them. I was a bit good, because it would have been really good to see them, because I've never seen them before. Yeah. But I got to see at least three songs, so I'm really happy. But the beauty of it is going into it. So, you know, festivals are checky for everything when you're going into the main stage. They didn't care. So you could take as many cans, as many spirits, oh. anything you wanted in. So obviously the um, the bar were making nothing. Like they yeah. were just loading you over, please buy your pint, we're going to lose us jobs. Like you're doing this voluntarily. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're just poor. <laughs> yeah, so like, they're not losing no money. But well, the, the whole thing, well, don't get me wrong, but so everyone were going in like Stella in every pocket. I didn't have many pockets because obviously I spiked it like a moan. I couldn't really hold much. <laughs> uh, but like the second well that was the first night we just taking loads of cans in because we wanted to get rid because the cans were cold and then when you get to second day third day you know where to put them yeah. in so warm can for breakfast Oof. Stella oh dear <laughs> Use, <laughs> using it as mouthwash instead <laughs> you just in, back to square one wasn't it like back into game um, yeah I'm a lev and then we left a few bands, and I can't remember who else we saw. Actually, I don't know, I've got a line up on me. Uh, 
what did I say? Uh, Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes obviously headlined. I don't know who else played that day, and it's really bugging me. It's really <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to pull the lineup up? Yeah, go for it. Whichever's easiest, yeah. Whichever's easiest, yeah. Uh, Just while uh, Gian's uh, having his uh, his technical, uh, yes. yeah, his technical uh, flow going. Um, yeah, I've already said before, but uh, but check out uh, Gian's uh, socials. Um, you will find one and the other on either one of his accounts when you go on. So if you head over to uh, to Gian spins to obviously the graphics will be coming up throughout this anyway. But for those people listening, Gian underscore spins underscore two t double o. Um, yeah, his personal accounts tagged in that uh, description as well. Um, check out all his stuff. He's uh, he's super friendly. He'll uh, he'll literally sit and talk to anybody about anything. His uh, music's just one of his many loves. Mu- uh, literally movies and his passion for cine world and. <laughs> I'm back. Excuse <laughs> <laughs> me on advert though. I mean, come on. This is very true. This is very true. Um. <laughs> Also, just before we, uh, we we jump back into the download, now that you've got the uh, the lineups and stuff, um, yeah, um, finally, after we had some, uh, we took some time out for ourselves, uh, myself and uh, Chris, uh, but we were still working behind the scenes. So literally, within the next week, we finally launch our uh, our merchandise store, hey. where we have. Um, boatloads of different things we've got two different ranges um of obviously items that are coming out initially um but the whole premise behind us doing this is just our love of clothing creative designs uh music uh, so we tied all them things together and we've made the ambitious goal of 75 percent of our proceeds are going to get directly donated to mental health charities in uk um, it's just our way of doing our bit. We we didn't decide to do the clothing range and things like that to to make money off of it. It's it was solely of the premise of giving back, just like a slogan says, um, and donating that money to charities because even the smallest amount will help people. And I think a lot of people nowadays with life gets very busy. They might intend to donate to charities, but they never just get round to it. All you've simply no. got to do is visit a site, pick some merchandise that you like the look of and you thought oh, I might actually like to wear that get it bought and literally 75% of what it's cost you is going straight to mental health charities so mm. it's, it's it's our way of doing as bit but yeah we're super excited to get it out there and the the train never stops it, it goes flying past every every single stop it never it never stops one little bit so we've got as a as debut ones coming out um but We've got so many other things penciled in for merchandise and you know and, and other content that's coming onto the channel. So just like anything, just everybody keep doing what you're doing, sharing, liking, uh, getting it on your stories, getting people talking about it. We're we're growing community day by day. Um, and it's just everybody's in the same collective um, movement that it's just their way of helping a long way. Helping us all to have more conversations with us, close friends, with strangers, get talking about mental health. Um, no conversations are taboo. You, you could literally change someone's life just through a conversation. So uh, we need, we all need to be encouraging to do that. Absolutely. Thanks for your patience there, G. Um, have we got the lineups? We've got the lineups. Put my glasses on. Here we go. This is where he goes into look at that. Look at that. Super oh, and when he gets them on. Yeah, so we I got I caught at Malevolence. Uh, we watched Hot Milk. Mm. Um, then we watched a bit of Holding Absence, but then went back to the tent because we wanted to have something to eat and stuff. Just because it's been a it's a, not a long day as such, but it it's not raining as well, which was really good. It only rained while we set up. <laughs> mm. So, and then we kind of. Left it for a bit, then we saw Neck Deep. Um, because obviously, his friend Craig looks like the singer from Neck Deep, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's all like, You didn't tell me you were here. He's like, Is that me? I was like, Yeah, is <laughs> that me? <laughs> he's thrown his hair everything down to a T, but he doesn't know who he is. <laughs> yeah, he's part. like, Wait, when did you get that picture? <laughs> oh, you on stage, yeah, I see him, <laughs> but we're like, 
mate, I'm at home. I'm like, whatever, I'm famous now. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't pretend you don't know, mate. <laughs> exactly. And then, yeah, Frank Carter was the main, main headline. But um, the funny thing about all this is, so his other friend, Jacob, um, decided he wanted to miss the first day because he wanted to watch the England-Scotland game. Yeah. Which, which ended nil-nil. And he was kind of kicking off after saying, oh, nil-nil, at what point? But it's one of his favourite band idols. And one of the members sang with Frank Carr and the Rattlesnakes. So we all filmed it, sent in it, and he was furious. Oh, no. Which I can imagine. So he turned up the next morning, a bit annoyed, because he, he travelled down that way, and his friend lives nearby, one at Cities. I, I couldn't tell you which. But he, we kept, me and Josh went to meet him and help him with his stuff. He literally carried a chair. Josh carried the majority, and I carried a bit. And he just kept stopping, and <laughs> Josh was furious with him. And it, it was stood shouting at him. So people who were sat down having a drink were kind of chuckling along because they were like, what's going on? And Josh is like, well, this guy's just turned up. <laughs> and um, and he was not even carrying any of his stuff. So we were threatening to throw it all on the floor, but we wouldn't have done that to him. We finally got to camp and just left him. To, we set his tent up and everything before then. So we got to come and just sit down. But it, we were like, come on, come on. And it was really funny. But on the second day, um, Twin Atlantic, yeah, Twin Atlantic played and they all came out in Scotland kit. So you were having a great right belt. Oh, no. <laughs> so that, that, yeah, <coughs> late. We came and met him and everything. Because when we went and met him, I got the rest of the beer and finally got my blue band taken away from me after smuggling in about <laughs> nine crates of beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd have been with you on that. I'd have been constantly smuggling it back in. Yeah. But, was the second time, and it's not, not bad about them because it was great for us. The guy was like, "Have you got any beer?" And I went, "Well, he went, you know what? I don't care, stuff." So, <laughs> it, well, obviously, you could, there was strictness with some people, but some people weren't as fussed, and it made it a bit better because we weren't taking the mick, and we weren't like taking like umpteen stuff in. You know, it was just enough you know, for everybody. Because there were me, Josh, Wade, and you, and my little tent, and Liam. <laughs> And Jacob, there were about 10 of us, yeah. Whenever, you, about... whenever you keep saying little 10, I just keep thinking dog kennel. It, 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 well, dog kennel is like a, it's like, a, that's a palace compared to what it was. <laughs> it was literally, it, it was basically what you'd like store your shoes in when you're a child, you know, like when you're, you know, <laughs> you're like, oh, that's good. You, know, you could play in that and you've got like a little pop up. They were that pretty much. <laughs> it, you, you, you pegged it down, it blew away. Like a kite. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was first night. And then so the second day were like the the first day where it all were like from 12 o'clock onwards. Um, we kind of sat at tent for a lot of it because some of the bands we didn't know, but we just thought we, we were a bit delicate after the first night because we stayed up as well, all of us, as you do in a festival. We are music playing. So we missed like first few bands. Uh, but we went and just sat along grass and stuff or something. The first main one we saw were Wargasm. Oh, so love wargasm. wargasm. Yeah, love them. So we, if you remember, the... um, sorry to cut you off. If you remember, the first the first live stream gig we watched when we went into lockdown, it turned out well, it, it weren't that cracking, but well, Wargasm, five... yeah, that's the one. Wargasm were on it. One of the bands I didn't like... And you know which one I mean, because I'm like, why? What, what is this? I actually really like them now, and I'm going to buy tickets from tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. <laughs> I, I started listening to them. Like, you know what? I have my hands up here. They're really good. Maybe it was someone else pretending to be them. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't remember them being as good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's it. So, yeah, we saw them. Then we saw... Uh, what were Wargasm like live? Really good. Really good. Because like, they're playing Slam Dunk as well. Uh, they are like they were, they were good uh, I think they were on quite early for what they should have been yeah. but you've got to understand other bands are bigger bands aren't they and ultimately you know you've got like the main headline that weren't in Shikari they couldn't really go on after that no I, that's no respect to them do you know what I mean but yeah it's that and then everyone kind of had a toilet break a toilet for ridiculous queuing systems and stuff so while I were queuing I watched A <laughs> <laughs> the the only song I, I knew they played last, so I missed it anyway. <laughs> were, were Dougie playing? 
well, no, I, won't, I didn't even know about this. I didn't even know this you know, was real. Yeah, so, yeah. It's like people were thinking that it will like wind up, but no, Dougie from McFly actually plays in, I think, seven different bands. Um, no, yeah. He's one of them. So he could have been there and I would have known because I was dying for toilet that moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like stamping up floor to try and stop me. You know, like you do, like your child. Were the, uh, were the toilet situations, like facilities, better than as experienced in 2019 at Slam Dunk? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so what they've done is the ladies were always free because they kind of tripled up at ladies. <laughs> Didn't get why. You know, they, it's as it is without sounding derogatory. Yeah. But what's that doing is move, moving the gate so men got more of the toilets towards yeah. like the second. They don't fit it a lot better. But you had to kind of go when a band were playing because you had no chance of not. Yeah, that's true. Obviously, Yuri knows what Yuri knows, but everyone who needed the toilet, the queues were insane. Like, you'd be waiting about half hour. So you're like, are you kidding? I need it now. Yeah, because I, I distinctly remember that at, um, at Slam Dunk, which I'm, I'm imagining, obviously, it's not going to be the same this time around, right? But it was so busy to get there. In As it got later on at night, you'd got people just stood there going. Yeah, anyway. Like, yeah, and it was just like, do you know right. what? I'll hold it. <laughs> I'll hold it, Frank. I aren't. I aren't standing in what would be a puddle of water, but it's urine. That's just not no. Yeah, you just toilets right there, mate. I can see them. You pretty much stood next to it. If you walk a little bit further, you've got it. Yeah, but I mean to be, you know, to their to their defence, same as what I'd imagine it it was like. Obviously, with download stewards, like the stewards were straight on top of it as soon as I saw it. Like they were doing oh, the best. There were thousands of well, people there and stuff, but as soon as you know, we'd point out, here, mate, have a word with them two lads. And uh, literally, rather than being in a queue of four people, they've just gone round corner and just peed pretty much a, a foot from everyone. But that's it. When there's people stood around, you just think, come on. If you were somewhere like me at toilets, pointing the other way, you'd think, fair dues. Like at Leeds Fest, everyone just on bottom. Yeah. That's fine. Because yeah. uh, they know not to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then we saw um, Twin Atlantic is where the other in Scotland kit and got booed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Then um, we went and saw Creeper. Ah. So everyone went for that. And Will actually started crying at one point because it, I think it's his first gig back. Yeah. yeah. And it's misery. And he stopped and everyone sang it and he just dropped to the floor and started crying because they were like, you've got to imagine Over- it's eight. Overwhelmed. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was the, it was the best. Proper, like one of my favourite times seeing him. So I've seen him quite a few times now. I, I'm still to see him. Slammed on yeah. it first time. I was going to say three times this year <laughs> before, including <laughs> that. I want to see him end of this month for doing like a, an intimate set, aren't they, in, in Leeds? Yes, yeah. He bought the album, you got a ticket for it, like a bundle deal, but it wasn't the new album, it was the one before, so you got to think this was like two and a half years ago. Yeah, yeah. So, when you've said that now, I can't actually remember if I bought one or not, because that will. If you've got the album, then yes. <laughs> It's only way you could get it. No, from Crash no, no, I don't think so then. It must be a different one that I'm thinking of. Then we saw While She Sleeps, which, well, mega. Yeah. End of that went in at Shikari, and that was just, <sighs> just like, just bang on, just full of like strobe lights and synthesizers and dancing. And I don't know how she did it, but uh, my friend's girlfriend, Enya, managed to bring eight or nine pints from the beer from the beer thing down through the through the pits all the way to us in the front and what? like we're all like, what did you get these here? She went, hey, easy. And we were like, how does that happen? No, no, I wouldn't have been able to do that. We were all like, hey. I mean all over for me. Game over, man, game over. You know what I mean? Yeah, literally carried. So you know when you go to Mackey's or anywhere, they put four in a thing. Yeah. She had like but like kind of and I was like, how much <laughs> we're really thankful. Uh, uh... Yeah. <laughs> And as like, you can, I remember literally when obviously the pilot got announced. You told us that obviously you'd you'd joined the mailing list, and then obviously you got the ticket and stuff. Um, I was I was so good because of Enter Shikari. Like yeah, so, so excited to see him. I've still not got to see him live. Um, so when obviously that that is happening, I just can't wait for that. But I like artist slash rave in it in a sense because of how the play. And all the newer stuff is more up that avenue now. They've kind of not, not changed, but they've done, you know, they've gone with the times. You can only do that for so long. But now it's whatever the play is, like you've got that beat back. You know what I'm getting at. They've evolved, haven't they? They've sort of like, you know what I mean? They've, they've gone 
and it's authentic as well how they've gone. It's not like some bands you can tell they're playing music that they don't believe in, kind of thing. Yeah, um, that's it. Still, still one of uh, still one of my claims to fame that Enter Shikara uh, Enter Shikari followed really? me on Twitter. <laughs> I remember when Paul Weller liked my post. <laughs> I remember that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've got so, so many instances like that. Um, who played... Um, yeah, so the, the Sunday, Sunday... Yeah, so the Sunday, um, the first band we saw were... Oh, in fact, no, I went back myself to see them. It's a band I've never heard of, but I've... I mean, I've never heard, but I've heard of, and they were called Higher Power. Um, when I started watching them, it was the day went with the last days where you had, to, you had to drink all your stuff pretty much. You didn't want to take it home, and it, you know, I, I, you know, like you do, you tend to video, you put a video on your Instagram and tag them, and then they started like, you know, did same back and whatnot, like put it on their story. It turns out they're from Leeds. Really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Never, heard, never heard them play. Heard of the band name? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Leeds band. They were really good, but. Yeah, really enjoyed them. Um, went on my own, went back, told everybody, but they were, you know, it's up to them. They wanted to have a drink at 10, which it more than welcome to. But that's, you just, start, I started talking to people there as well. I was stood on my own, but everyone was like, I do, mate, you're all right, yeah. This is, this is one of the things where, when I have talked to people about festivals before, that they've, they've said that before, and they've said it in presence to you as well. Like, you know what I mean? You're, you're just as much as, of an advocate as, not a, not a Paul Eamon advocate, but, you're as uh, you're as much of as a uh, an advocate as I am when it comes to things like this. That if people have got any anxieties or concerns about festivals, about the fact, oh, you know, no one I want, no one I know wants to go. Just 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 find even a, a couple of people, just befriend people, and then when you're there, just talk to people. Everybody's super friendly, and you make so <laughs> many lifelong friends after attending festivals. Yeah. It's just brilliant. I- even if you, I mean, we. We've got a, another episode coming up where we're going to be talking about the Slam Dunk Festival that we're, we're going to be uh, attending. It's same on any time we've done Slam Dunks. We have intentions of who we want to see. And nine times out of ten, you won't be wanting to watch someone I'm wanting to watch because it'll be the first time I've seen them, but it might yeah, well, be the fourth time you've seen them. Well, like so the you... one at uh, I went to Temple Newsom. You really want to see water parks. I want yep. to see Sea. So... We both went and watched them, then went back for a simple plan, I think it was. Yeah. But we, yeah. we had a program, but you do that. But while well, you were down there, I bet you, you know, stood near someone and they were pretty friendly with you. Exactly. You were, and you just get to, and it's always the same conversations, exactly like what you're saying there, that you can guarantee that person that stood next to you doesn't appear to have any friends with them at that point yeah. is doing the exact same thing you're doing, that from their collective group of friends they're with, they want to see a bucket list act for themselves <laughs> yeah. that they've never got to see so they're going to see them whereas the friends who've seen in this instance water packs four times don't want to miss out on this other band that they've not seen yet so but everybody That's comes what... back together you just kind of you go off and and watch different yeah. ones we were, i watched seaway we've been and then uh, next literally the next day for next week were uh get up kids which i've never seen before yeah uh oh obviously big band and we watched a bit of them because we knew we were coming to meet you. And I was like, look, I've seen them. That's all I wanted to do. But it's like when I went to see uh, Ghost, I didn't, I, I went to be going with someone and it didn't happen, you know, fair enough. And I went on my own to Leeds and I was still by myself and there were girls to by herself. Started chatting to her, you know, tell me about her family life. that she got a family and stuff. Uh, I think a boyfriend, maybe a kid. And I was like, sound, you know, this is fine. It's not about going and being like, trying to talk to me in that way. It was just, yeah. we went, and had a proper good laugh and we, we sang all the songs together like so you like nice to meet you <laughs> and that's it that's that's why I, I try and tell as many people it's and some people within maybe not close friend circle maybe you know it's become distant over time whatever you don't see people as much as you'd want to even they'll sort of say to me they were like oh i've never actually been to a festival and i'm like wait what you've not i, I thought you've been to one no i didn't end up going all them years ago and stuff and it's like it's, it's just one of them, it's a must-see thing to be at a festival. The sheer yeah, amount man. of emotions you go through while you're there, when you just, you'll be watching a band, maybe by yourself, maybe we friends, and, you know, the lyrics and how they resonate with, with, with that, actually what's going off around you at that time. Even weather, even weather can't put a damper on it. When it 
when the oh. heavens opened for newfound glory. When we I was stood, stood then for the, that man from Ireland, a bit older than us, come on his own. We started singing along with him, and they were like, oh, cheers, you made a very good time. We're like, nice one, mate, have a good one. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? We're only sober for like 20 minutes, but that's what you do. And that's it, innit? Yeah, it's, it's all about like letting people enjoy themselves as much as they can possibly enjoy it and bringing those people that are maybe a little bit timid, you know, just like relax, just you're here, you've paid to be here, you've got every right to enjoy yourself. Just, just let it. go. Just let go. Yeah, that's it. That's what Elsa said. <laughs> yeah. Um, after them... They went to Elvana, oh, yeah. which, is, which is the Elvis front of Nirvana tribute band, which is brilliant. I've seen them before in Leeds, but we just sat back for them because we didn't have to get to it from, we just enjoyed them. After that, I went to see Massive Wagons, a band I've never heard before. Really good band, really good band. Um, one of the other lads knew they were um, fantastic. I mean, I, I couldn't tell any of the songs the song, but really enjoyed them. And then everyone went back to the tent, and because I drunk quite a lot, trash boat were playing. So you know, I love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't drink anything else because I had such bad like indigestion and everything. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember stood watching trash boat, pretty drunk, with a grab bag of Maltesers. <laughs> I remember. I remember you saying, "Yeah, I'm the just, grab bag of Maltesers." <laughs> I'm like, do you want to be a mate? I'm like, no, no. I just want to watch these. And I watched them, at them, went back to 10. They're like, you all right, Jane? I was like, <laughs> and you know the reason I felt horrible? It was about a game that they all decided to make up at 10, because that's what they're doing it. Yeah. Basically, Josh had made this drink, and it was a Fanta fruit twist bottle, like a big one. And I want to say, only got a bit of the Fanta in it, let's be fair, but half a bottle of white rum, half a bottle of dark rum. Give it a shake. It was brutal, mate. I can't. There's no words. And basically, they started, they started this game where it basically it started off with your deck of cards. You had to pick a card. And if you got it wrong, you had to take a sip of your, your own drink. But if you got it right, it would either down your drink or drink a shot, well, a gulp of Josh's, I don't know what we called it. It, it, it was like a Hurricane 3000 or something. It was wow, something not. So after that, we started playing another game where it was. He went round in a circle and he had to count to 21. But certain um, certain numbers had certain things you had to do instead of saying the number. Because if you got it wrong, you had to have a drink of your drink and you had to go back to the beginning. So like, you had to clap for three. I might have got it wrong. Instead of saying seven, you said 14. Uh, <laughs> or Slade. And once you got to 21, you could change one of the numbers. So we changed one of them to you got to have a shot of Josh's drink. And it always seemed to land on me. <laughs> and that round again, the change in number to when it gets to number 16, G and has to have a drink of Josh's drink. So either way, I will lose it. But it just, it, but other people drank it, but I was wired. And <laughs> that I, I can't see no more. And then, like, after Trash Boat, what did I go see? It was Skindred. So I was okay for that. I was just still drunk. <laughs> yeah. But skin, and when they do the Newport living and everyone just spinning shirts, it was one of the night, the best things to see ever, like all them people just doing like helicopter with the shirts. Because that's what people tend to, especially if they've not been to a festival, don't realise that it's, you're not constantly like blathered. Like you go through no. periods where you, you don't, you won't have a drink for a couple of hours because you kind of you, dancing about and stuff like that. Yeah, but when you were drinking that drink that Josh made, you were just drunk forever. <laughs> well, <I'm not. laughs> but yeah, after Skindred, it was Frank Turner played. So we, we watched him and then we went to see Bullet. But for Bullet, it wasn't raining like it was when we went to Slam Dunk. So that was brilliant. And we watched Bullet and they were fantastic. And then we kind of came back to the tent and just chilled. I forgot to mention on the second night or the night I had all that drink, the trash bowl. Yeah, it was. Everyone were playing metal music and stuff. And we were like, you know what? Let's just have a bit of a sing along and everyone enjoy themselves. And one at Lads, I think it was Slade, put like a cheesy 90s mix on. 
and we were all belting his lungs out to um, S Club 7, don't stop. So it's good. <laughs> Bring it all back, sorry. Bring it all back, sorry, I got it wrong. But like stuff like Venga Boys and Peter Andre and I've got a video on my phone and it's like everyone's just like in euphoria about it. Yeah. The best. <laughs> and it, every, it's just, but I'm guessing people walking around thinking, what are these doing? But you know what? They were just, they were the best. Like, so good. That part. Just that sing along night, it lasted about two hours. It was just brill. Like, even even at festivals and stuff like that, you know what I mean, special downloads, you're listening to a certain sort of music that's been played, you still do need the outlet while you're there to get through the entire weekend because it's, it is yeah. it takes its toll on you. Like, that's you know, physically because you're pickling every organ that you've got through alcohol consumption. But then, the, you know, the, the mentally taking in, you know, <coughs> taking in everything that's the excitement and everything else of, of being there, how overwhelming it is. And you just do... Like, just need to lay there at times and just kind of, like, stare up at the sky and listen to whatever. Yeah. Well, if I was staring up in my current tent, it'd have been, like, an MRI scan, mate. (laughs) (laughs) But, But, um, honestly, don't get me wrong, my friends are my friends, but they were such a nice group of people to do it because I've only started knowing these people for, like, two years now, and they all live, like, Ackworth way and that way, and... You know, they've kind of invited me and included me. And I always tell them, like, by text and stuff, how thankful I am. And it was just such a good thing. And I do have to give a shout out for, to Aaron Crofts for going to download. Yep. He, did, he didn't actually go, but that's why we do a shout out to him. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll, we'll make sure when we've put the episode out that we'll, uh, we'll tag his socials in it as well. Because he'll be like, well, you're not bad. And then he'll get to this point. <laughs> And he's going to, yeah, you're going to be inundated with abuse, I'd imagine. <laughs> it'll, it'll block me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no, it was, was still good, yeah. What, that's um, like... what was I going to ask then? Um, yeah, in, in closing with it, what, um, we can only really compare it to Slam Dunk, the last festival that we went to, which yeah. was completely diff- different. Download isn't Slam Dunk and Download Pilot wasn't an actual proper download one, but were there anything that Download did differently that Slam Dunk at Temple Newsome could kind of yeah. like... Yeah, you've taken your own drinks and were an absolute boss. Yeah. Uh, there were, let me think, there were only two stages in this. So you got to... Your Slam Dunk's got all, like, I'm going to say six, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Having two, and they did the thing like they're trying to do this year about trying to make a not clash. Yeah. From one band to the start, Adam, that because there are only two stages, you could see everybody if you wanted. Yeah. That's that one a really good bonus. But what you find is that you're going to get to a point where you need to go back to the tent or you want to get something to eat or I want to say a nap. Do you know what I mean? I know you yeah, can't. Yeah. Sometimes you just want to go chill because you can still see that. Well, the beauty of where we were camped, you, you could see it. I mean, not everyone was saying, but it was just we're right there. Amazing. But they did that well. The whole, we're going to do the, the split stages split times but making no clashes that were a good thing the, t- the toilets and the toilets I don't want to talk about that especially not last day <laughs> bad they had a silent disco but everyone just ran for it because it was the first time they could do anything so we never got in ah but yeah my knowledge we never got in I might have gone to bed and they might have gone back I don't know <laughs> <laughs> what were um Obviously, because of the Temple News and one we did in 2019, which just to point out, touching on the slam dunk one, the Temple News and one in 2019 was the first one that held there. So you'd imagine that there would have been teething problems and stuff that were still learning. And then after that, we went oh. straight into the pandemic. So, um, yeah, the, the one thing that we found at the Temple News and one was the phone service there. Like, it was next to none. You, you could you in the middle of a field, so they were looking at avenues of like introducing Wi-Fi, which would also help the card machines because the card machines were working off of phone signals as well. And now they're going to have to because no one wants to handle cash. It's all contactless. That's what they were doing there. You see, it was contactless only, I believe. So that was a big thing. Yeah, it yeah. was. It was kind of- yeah, because so, nobody. It's when when you're at a festival. That's that's why I've all, like because you've got some people I talk to and they're sort of like they'll say, well, it's it's a case of I'd I'd rather take money with me because it, but then it's like yeah, but 
if you if your story and all like I don't know, you take hundred and odd quid with you or whatever, and then you lose whatever it is that you're carrying it in, you've got nothing for the entire time, at least with your card. You lose your card. Nine times out of ten, a person's card is registered to the phone these days. Yeah. So yeah. you are right. Okay. okay, so the, that Saturday I went out, I lost my wallet, <laughs> cancelled my bank card, then found my wallet 20 minutes later. It was in pixels and it got stuck under um, under chair, but under all like contraptions and stuff. And I felt really bad because I thought my ass off of But yeah, that's another story. But <laughs> I've been but, there uh, before. I've been there before. To be fair, I did it with one of my old work uh, places yeah. when I worked at Escape. It was I'd put my bank card in my inside fleece pocket of my work jacket, and then I couldn't find it at home, and it had been a week, and I still couldn't find it. And then I cancelled my card, and obviously it was it was Santander, so everything's longer. It's like a yeah, yeah, yeah. posting out and stuff. I, yeah. And then I went in that night and pulled my fleece off at thingy. Put my jacket and I, and I was like, "What's that?" I put my hand card with there, and I, I was so wounded. So I can imagine you're daft, don't you? And you can't do it about it. You just wish you could go backwards, and it was like, "Why didn't I check that?" And it's like hindsight, hindsight. So the That's irony, it, right? only kicks in afterwards, anyway. Yeah, yeah. So what they did at download is they had Wi-Fi, but they were tailoring it to all the sound systems and things. So your phone worked for certain things, but then from like. Two o'clock at morning onwards, when they shut everything off, everything were like, doo, 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 doo. you know, you're getting like umpteen messages and stuff. So if you woke up at like five, six in the morning, that's when you could do all your texting. Ah, uh, yeah, because or, that, that ties in because that's what you were doing. You you were dropping yeah, messages so, towards kind of or, like first thing in the morning, just sort of. Or, like Instagram stories, they weren't in order. So Creeper would come on, then someone else, and that's Creeper. So it's just, <laughs> it's just because I fall off at the right time, they were coming through at different times, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's why I always encourage anybody that's going to the festivals, especially if it's, they've never been in that situation before, I always encourage them to the same. By all means, pull your phone out, record it, you know, you want it to take memories of while you're there and stuff like that. But in terms of uploading out, don't really upload it. Keep it on your phone until you get home and you've got your Wi-Fi at home and you've got time to sit and tag people and everything else. I think people see it, though. I get what you're saying, but I were there and I was thinking it's like a bragging right, isn't it? Yeah. yeah well, hey, guys. That is the that's the flip side. That's what I always say to people that tech your stuff on your phone that you want to tech, but the in between stuff just live record. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. it. The live recording I get, but like for me, when when I did all what I did, I didn't know how to live record, <laughs> mate. I knew how to, I know I know how to press an old record and then add to story. That's I, just that <laughs> because I mean. And don't get me wrong, like, we've both got, we could probably think of about 50 different people in his friend circle that are just screaming at us now saying, <laughs> stick your phone in your pocket, you don't even need to be, well, you, you're at a festival, you're supposed to be enjoying it and stuff. But I, I, think, we're, I think we're from a culture where it's it's different, like, because we're, we're, we're that busy when we're there talking to his friends, talking to new people, you know, enjoying what? the show and stuff that, Sometimes we've genuinely been to so many gigs and stuff and we've never even pulled his phone out of his pocket and then we've been so gutted weeks after because we've got nothing to look back on. Yeah, your memories are there, you've been there, but it's different because sometimes, especially in our situations, how we get our phone albums pieced together, what the hell happened kind of thing. That's what you did for your nights out, yeah. you got to think, <laughs> I'm, I'm there and I'm having Josh's like, Hurricane 3000, so I had to film it to know what I've been to see. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, and, and it's that. And, and, and as we as we found anywhere when we went into lockdowns and stuff like that, and then as Facebook year memories popping up and depressing us of <laughs> our smiling mugs arriving at Slam Dunk and stuff, and it were like, oh, well, life fucking sucks right about yeah. now. It was the Temple of Newton Slam Dunk where we found out my brother, our Jan, didn't we, and his mates, uh, Lizzie and that were there. Yeah. And that's what went to see uh, Bullet because it was raining and we were just all stood under there. It was, they were really good at getting around. Yeah. They were just, and like my brother and that, yeah. Yeah, that, that were great. I mean, there were loads of people as well and loads of people that weren't necessarily within the circle that we were going with, but loads of people there that we knew that also <laughs> had never mentioned that they were going. But you you and being more quite far forward from Newfound Glory, I went to toilets, it started raining yeah. and I came back and like Sarah, Laura, Laura, Neil, 
and they all had their brothers, and they're like, I'll come stand with us for a bit. And when I see them, because I hadn't seen them in a long time, so obviously, yeah, yeah. And, and stuff, but when I see them, I thought, right, I'm going to go find them again now. Awesome to see you. But that was just like a 10, 15 minute thing. But I'll sing along to Newfound Glory in the rain. Oh, that was that were immense. Like, literally, me and Bit, like you say, you'd, you'd nip. I think you went, I think you went to get some food first, and then you went to the toilet because you wanted to soak it, it, stuff it, up. We were just that busy. I had to go to Lou, but I couldn't get there because we were yeah. stuck. That's so what it was. That's exactly it. Like that's when we became separated. But obviously, we, me and Bean, were at the front, and I, I personally couldn't believe how close to the stage we were. Like we were literally from here to me wall away. It? It, it was absolutely crazy. And then, like I said, it just it just opened, did sky, and there's just rain. I haven't seen rain like that since I was a kid. Like it was so so, it was coming down. Oh, and then it, oh, I like Eric Draven, can't I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then it just literally it just stopped, and then that's when we we cut off from seeing Newfound Glory, and we went to see Bullet, which I really want to see Bullet because I've not seen yeah, him live we, at that we point. Watched, we watched all Newfound Glory because Bullet played the same time as All Time Low. Did they? Yeah, <clears throat> we finished Newfound Glory and went straight over to Bullet because I am stood outside. And then we left early for Bullet. Because we needed to get the shuttle bu- uh, shuttle bus back to Leeds. Oh, brilliant! First shuttle straight to Leeds. We tried to go into a pub. I was filthy, if you remember. I don't yeah. know how I was filthy and no one else was. No, my my white high tops weren't white. <laughs> but that, but, no, but my knees, my face, yeah, your knees were like a, in mud. <laughs> and we tried to go under arches, and we were like, we're not going to get here. And then we were like, where shall I go? And in my head, it was like, ding, 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 key club. <laughs> and that was the best part because literally everybody, once we were going up the central reservation of Leeds, heading up towards Keep yeah. of the main promenade, you could tell everybody heading up that way had been to the festival because everybody were muddy. Everybody we, just looked like shit. We didn't see a lot of people because we left early, so we got in. Yeah, yeah. Well, the queuing. Because if you remember, um, I got a message off Bryony, and I think she will be crack now. I'm, yeah. I think... Like Jane, are you in keys? Like, yeah, I'm coming to find you. And they just jumped on us when we got anywhere. Like, yeah, this is amazing. Yeah. But like, the fun of having all that and then coming to that and being muddy, sweaty, and having a good time still, it's just carried on, didn't it? But the next day were horrible. <laughs> do you know? Do you know what the highlight for me of getting back to Key Club? What it was watching the um, the paying staff, the look on the face when you passed them your kimono to hang up on. Um, Oh yeah, and then look, I went look after that, mate. Look after that. Like why? I'm like pretty big deal, mate. Pretty big. <laughs> I loved it. I was kind of like, why? And it's like, why not? <laughs> why not? Look after it. Probably cost me more to put it in there than it was for actual jacket. <laughs> uh, oh man, it was. Yeah, it was. And I, I'm super excited. Literally for start of September literally to get to to get to my first festival after all this ridiculous yeah. 18 month so I'm I'm like super jealous that you got to go to download but we're already all making plans for when we can try and get to a proper download yeah. together we're going to see how things go with obviously slam dunk we've got we've got a super 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 busy month with everything that's uh that's planned in we uh podcast episode coming up obviously doing slam dunk as well <laughs> Looking forward Definitely. to that. Um, anything else that you want to add, mate? Not really, mate. No, it's been an absolute blast. Thanks for having me on. It's, I really enjoyed it. Loved the siren, by the way. That was perfect timing. Yeah, we're going to have to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the police are here for him. <laughs> but no, man, look, that, you're, you're super busy at best of times, uh, so I appreciate you taking time out. Um, I know a lot of people will, uh, will take a lot from... Uh, your review that we've given and uh, we'll uh, we're going to drop uh, the episode through to download as well uh, let them know because this is exactly why they ask for you know post festival reviews from people that's been and stuff how to make it better what worked what didn't that's... and you've, you've got to think of before this download festival there were nothing so everyone were on, on a big low of, you know especially on the music scene so everyone going into that everyone was so giddy and buzzing so you know, people who've been going through a bit of a tough time and stuff, going to that, everyone just went from zero to 10 and it gave them that boost that they need. As in, like, 
you know, like even with their own health and stuff, it got to a point where the people love gigs, people love music, and there'd been nothing. Yeah. And it's like, we had nothing. And now we can go to this. We've passed all the tests. Let's go and have the best time. And that's why, that's why it was so good this time around. It's good every time, but you know what I mean? It, well, yeah, it's it was sort of like the, the icing on the cake, shall we say, yeah, it, in that sense. It's, it, it's meant... It's meant more to people this time around, I think, more than anything. Yeah. And yeah. I'll, I'll I, certainly, I'm just talking in theory, but I'm, I'll but certainly got, feel the same after Slam Dunk. Yeah, I'm gonna say because that's your first one. Whereas yeah. I've got, I'm going to Leeds for the Friday, so I get to do that as well. But it's just nice that this is back for now. So my mouth of it. I mean, I, I, I said the same to Bryony um, and Brogan. To be fair, when we were out that at the emo disco. Even though oh, yeah. that weren't a festival, when we were yeah. in there, that would I kept saying to them, I was like, it's I can't actually believe that we're here. Like it's it is quite overwhelming. Like I'm I'm stood here just watching my friends acting like idiots, but I'm loving just watching them be as happy as they are, kind of thing. That's why me and Jack then went, right, we're gonna go to Manchester. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was super jealous that we were working for that one. <laughs> As soon as uh, I saw it, it, I was like, "That that sucks." And but them beautiful pictures, absolutely beautiful <laughs> pictures. That's life. That is beautiful. Uh, Ange, mm. Ange definitely loved it, didn't she? Bless her. Oh yeah, Ange. <laughs> <laughs> right, mate. I should I should let you get off, get yourself some food and stuff. But um, man, these these. It's never a, a chore talking to you at all. We, we can talk for hours about anything and everything. Um, thank you for taking time out. It's been awesome, man. Love you. And love you uh, we'll have a uh, we'll have a chin wag for a little bit uh, as we come off air. But uh, yeah, for everybody else, uh, check out the uh, check out the audio, the uh, the video. Um, get ready for his merchandise and and just get sharing. We're going to be running some, uh, some competitions where. The, t- uh, the traditional uh, Instagram stuff where you know tag so many friends in it, uh, like it, share it to your story, um, and obviously you can you can win some free merchandise and and things that go along with it. So uh, we've got some more podcast uh, episodes uh, getting recorded on it next uh, coming few weeks, all leading up lovely timing for Slam Dunk, and then literally I have a few days to recover and then I officially start my first year mental health nursing degree is that the week after yeah <laughs> it's slammed up the saturday you starting the monday tuesday yeah kind of <laughs> yeah see i've got it i've got the best of both worlds like kind of montana me i go to slam dunk and then i go to hodge for a week oh yeah yeah like recovery. <laughs> yeah no <laughs> I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hoping the timetable thing gets announced soon, which I should know shortly. But I'm hoping they put it back to a couple of weeks in September. Yeah, but I really I, I really don't think they're gonna. <laughs> yeah. But it's hey, like your, it's like living, your first. Yeah, I'm living student life now, aren't I? So I suppose I should I have to get used to it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but man, love you. We'll love you uh, we'll end it, and then I'll uh, yeah we'll have a tune mag. But nice uh, thanks for listening, everyone. G, thank you. Everybody, check him out on his socials. Thanks, guys. Thanks very much. Live life, be kind, give back, guys. <laughs>